Good afternoon. Uh, welcome. This is the one o'clock agenda of the Committee on Housing and the Committee on Health and Human Services. Um, I'd like to welcome my uh, co-chair, Senator Santa Ventura, for the Committee on Health and Human Services. And for the Committee on Housing, we also have our vice chair, Senator Camilo, and the Human Services Committee. Okay. Um, this meeting is being streamed live on YouTube. In the unlikely event that we have to abruptly end this hearing due to technical difficulties, the committees will reconvene to discuss any outstanding business at 1 p.m. on Thursday, March 16, in room 225, and a public notice will be posted on the legislature's website. Our time limit for testifier is one minute. This meeting will include the one o'clock agenda of the Joint Committees on Housing and Human Services, as well as the 101 p.m. agenda of the Committee on Housing. Um, if there are temporary technical glitches during your turn to testify via Zoom, we may have to move on to the next person due to time constraints. We appreciate your understanding and remind you that the committee has a written testimony. So the one o'clock agenda has two bills, starting with HB 224 HD2 relating to human services, which establishes the HPHA Public Housing Tenant Upward Mobility Pilot Program, and permits HPHA to contract with outside parties to implement the program. Okay, our first testifier is um, HPHA in support. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, Member of the Committee, Senator Sparsky. Thank you. Followed by several individuals in support Lemomi Khan, Alan Garcia, Lisa Smith, Tiffany Sims, and Jasmine Ramos. Is there anyone else wishing to testify on HP224? Okay, if not, um, any questions on HP224? Co-chair? No. Okay. This time we'd also like to welcome Senator Aquino. All right, so we'll move on to the next bill, which is HB 1397 HD1 relating to supportive housing, which establishes a supportive housing pilot program at the statewide Office on Homelessness and Housing Solutions and appropriates funds. Our first testifier, State Council on Developmental Disabilities and Support. Chair Chang, Chair Budaventura, thank you for this opportunity to provide testimony. We sent our written testimony to support, but we just want to point out that on page five, line 13, when it says supportive services, we just want to make sure that employment services were also included in those services that could be provided. Other than that, thank you so much. Um, okay, next we have the State of Hawaii Judiciary in support. Um, Governor's Coordinator on Homelessness and Support. A lot of chair, chairs, vice chairs, committee members, James Bushido, Governor's Coordinator on Justice, and the testimony of support for the members. Thank you. HPHA in support. Thank you, chairs, vice chairs, members of the committee, the Senate Service Supreme Court. Um, thank you. D Disability and Communication Access Board in support. Department of Human Services with comments. Yeah, good afternoon. Um, State Procurement Office with comments. Um, Department of Public Safety with comments. Hope Services Hawaii in support. Um, AARP Hawaii in support. Hawaii Substance Abuse Coalition in support. So short comments, uh, chairs, vice chairs, member, Alan Johnson, Hawaii Sons Abuse Coalition. I just want to remind everyone that we are finally moving into a more chronic, uh, you know, a chronic health system for substance abuse and mental illness. Uh, it's all about functionality. Housing First was great, but supportive Housing First are for those on the street who need more. And plus, at that point, many of them may choose to do residential or outpatient treatment, which would immensely improve their functionality. But getting them from the street into a treatment, that's not happening. And so this may be a first step of where we're meeting people where they're at and over time improving their uh, functionality. And we could greatly reduce the need for those subsidies and support as we do that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then we have several other testifiers in support. Hawaii Realtors, Catholic Charities Hawaii, Habitat for Hawaii Human Habitat for Humanity Hawaii Island Inc., Aloha Care, Fuller Lives Disability Housing Advocacy, Kaiser Permanente, Partners in Care, 
and several individuals, Kenneth Felling, Ellen Godby Carson, Christy McPherson, Kimmy Palacio, Will Caron, Carl Takamura, Sandra Oshiro, and Christine Miguel. Is there anyone else wishing to testify on HB 1397? Uh, Chair, committee members, uh, I first want to apologize for, um, um, my name is Delman Juan with the HHFDC. I want to apologize for not uh, being able to submit written testimony for this in uh, the next hearing. Something unexpected came up, which sort of messed up our uh, testimony preparation process. But with respect to HB 1397 House Draft 1, um, HHFDC would like to express our support. Anyone else wishing to testify on HB 1397? Aloha, um, Chair, Vice Chairs, and the Judiciary, oh no, the Health and Human Services and uh, the Housing Committee. My name is Angela Melody Young, testifying on behalf of CARES. Um, I just, you know, we're providing comments, and um, so the thing is, the, we just had a question about the research to provide comments that is it trying to distinguish disability as in special needs developmental disabilities or um, as HUD defines the um, chronically homeless who are also disabled, right? So for people who are not familiar with disabilities, um, it's people who experience debilitating and incapacitated, uh, people who suffer from incapac incapacitated medical conditions. <laughs> and um, so they can't fully function in society, right? But then there, because in the research, it says individuals transitioning from incarceration. And is it clumping these people also into disabled homeless? Because that's very different than special needs, developmental disabilities. So I think um, before such a measure moves forward, there should be more consideration for collecting data about the medical aspects about chronically homeless or disability um, as it relates to homelessness. Um, therefore, then the support services that will then be provided, right, um, from Medicaid, opiate treatment programs, or whether it's developmental disabilities, like. Um, it would be a lot different. So um, there should be a lot of more medical um, data before providing these housing pilot programs. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to testify on HB 1397? This time we'd also like to welcome Senator uh, Wright, Senator Shinji Perez, and we're all for joining us. Um, okay, if there's no one else wishing to testify on this measure, um, we'll go to questions and I do have Questions starting with um, the governor's coordinator on homelessness. Uh, I don't know if you saw the state procurement office's testimony, but they're asking why the exemption from procurement is necessary. I, I did have a chance just before the hearing to review the state procurement office's testimony, understand their concerns. Um, you know, I guess I would just um, offer two things. One is that I believe the intent is for this to be a pilot program and to test and demonstrate results in a, in a time limited and timely fashion. And so in that sense, I do think that the procurement exemptions would assist in that. I think it'll be tough to produce results within the time frame outlined by the bill without some flexibility on that end. And the other thought I would offer is that um, I think any pilot program or initiative that's intended to address homelessness. And I know that's not the exclusive emphasis of this bill, but it is in part designed to address um, homelessness. Um, the urgency of those needs, I think also warrants flexibility on the procurement side. Okay, thank you very much. Chair, I have a question. So, so if this is a special project and it's limited, um, you also are asking for um, positions. The positions are permanent. Is that correct? Uh, I, I believe the, the positions would be permanent. Um, so what as the is bill. the, the um, what is the um, temporary part of this program where you need to have an exemption from the procurement? Yeah, I, I think, as I understand it, I think the, the intent of the bill is to you know, combine the three pieces of funding, both the capital funds for construction, the rental subsidy, 
and the supportive services to quickly stand up and demonstrate the effectiveness of permanent supportive housing. I think it'll take a couple of years for those results to actually materialize. First, to get projects online, then to have people in place for long enough to actually demonstrate the impact on their lives and on the communities. Um, so the, I think the, the position is both to um, ensure that for, for my office, um, uh, the um, Office of Homelessness and Housing Solutions, to be able to both quickly um, deploy the funds for the supportive services and then to evaluate results over time. Now, if the, the pilot project proves successful, then I would think this is something that we would invest in further and create further supportive housing. If it's unsuccessful and it proves to be not worth the cost, then it'll be at the legislature's you know, so it's discretion. Kind of contracting out that you're asking for procurement and it's a special project for just that part of it. Uh, both, both for pro procurement, but also for monitoring and evaluation of the impacts of the pilot project. And those are all contracts. No, I, I would expect that the the staff, the staff person, staff. right? So mm -hmm. the staff is permanent, but you're contracting out for services. Right. Correct. Correct. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Any further questions? Yes, I do. Thank you, Chair. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, seems to me that there is monies. Well, really. Not no monies because it's blank appropriation for the rental housing evolving fund going to HHFDC mm -hmm. and blank monies going to um, Hawaii Public Housing Authority on this bill. That you understand, it's not just one pot of money; it's two pots of money. That's my understanding. Yes. Okay. So, are there any recommended amounts for these two pots of money? I, I think the early versions of the bill had recommended amounts. Okay, because there's no written it. testimony as to how much we're supposed to right. put in to fill in the blanks. Right. So you don't know. Well, if you're asking me, so the, you know, this is not an administration bill. Um, okay. It was, but but I did speak to the you know original crafters of the legislation. And I believe the original amounts, and I would actually defer to HPHA and HHFDC. Okay, I, I will ask. Oh, okay, all right. Okay, um, but you know what, you're there. Can I finish asking? Sure. A you can always interrupt me because I have a bunch of questions. Okay, your um, testimony, as well as Pat, um, Partners in Care's testimony, says you need more than the four five hundred dollars per month in rental supplements, yet. In this bill, and you're, you're telling me it's not your bill, so I understand why mm -hmm. there's a discrepancy. Mm -hmm. um, but I just want to know, maybe we need to amend it. It refers to still, the on page four, it still refers to 500 a month to HPHA. You want to keep that, or should that be increased? And I'll ask HPHA. Sure, sure. My, my suggestion, just based on my experience, was to um, leave the amount flexible. And because I think the intent of the bill is to make sure that whatever that rental subsidy is can ensure that the actual costs of operating the housing are covered. And so those costs might fluctuate over time. Um, and so, you know, I, I suggested language, I think, to make that amount flexible. So here's my other question. On page five, the supportive services funding, which includes, according to Shea Silver, he wants to include employment with it, mental health substance abuse counseling and daily living activities of no more than 800 per month. So are these, is this 800 per month plus, because it's going to be matched with federal Medicaid funds, is in addition per month to whom, I'm sorry, per individual you're going to help or? So my my understanding, and again, this goes back to you know the original drafters of the legislation, was that the intent was eight hundred eight hundred dollars per unit or per household per, per household. month, mm -hmm. and that that number actually came from the Corporation for Supportive Housing, which has experience operating supportive housing projects across the country, and that was their their suggested amount. Okay, so that that is exclusive of the rent, which is the five hundred per month. Correct. That's just for the 800 month is just for the supportive services for folks. Okay, so I have more questions, so, but not of you right now. Oh, okay. Um, again, public HPHA. 
So how much? Aloha. Aloha. So you have a blank amount. How much do you want? We'll take everything you've got. I know. That's what I mean. <laughs> In order for this. To... Uh, yeah, thank you. So, because if we leave the blank amount, it's not going to pass, right? The, the, the way the bill was drafted is about 100 units for construction purposes, a one time of 500,000 a unit, totaling $50 million for HHFDC. Uh, in addition to that, it was $10.5 million, I believe, for the services component each year. And for the HPHA portion, it was based on a rent supplement, but project-based. It goes with the project so that the developer does not charge higher rent. And that's up to $500, which is $6,000 a year for the 20 years that's in the bill, that's $14 million. So the blank amount should be $14 million 14 for HPHA. Uh, no, that's for the 20 years. And the reason I think it was drafted that way for 20 years, so the in the uh, in the formula to make the the formula work, the financial formula, if the bank and five hundred dollars a month of additional subsidies, that will make the numbers work. Okay, so it says for fiscal year 23 to 24. So are we supposed to divide the 14.5 million by 20 to fill in that blank? I think for, for the purpose of building it, the developer will need to put the performer. The and so five. it has to be some certainty for the next 20 years that they're going to get that project based rent supplement up to $500,000. So, however, the legislature see fit, either it's appropriated year by year with certain guarantees, so the developer is able to execute the building of that uh, project or it can be a, a one-time kind of lump sum that does not expire. So your request is 14.5 million to fill in the bank on page eight. That, that was the initial bill, that's what it had, correct. Okay, so come to, um, and what is, what is the, um, what is your response to James Koshiba's statement that the $500 per month in rental supplement isn't enough. So, so for, for, for the project, it's, it's, it's never enough, whatever amount okay. you put there, but the, uh, uh, the 500 is best, uh, it's uh, based on previous practices running the rent supplement program. We have capped it on 500,000 and we were able to expand all the monies that's given to us by the legislature. We did try one time of increasing that amount for the first six months to $1,000, uh, partnering with uh, Catholic charities at the time to target the homeless population for six months. Then we reduced it back to 500 and that worked. For, for this bill, however, I think the 500 is appropriate because whoever builds it can use, it's can, there's a $50 million there and the use of other forms of financing such as LIHTAC and others. So, um, I'm sorry, because I remember this $500 per month in rental supplement yes. as part of the DHS, well, HPHA budget. Yes. And it always goes towards helping out this X group of people, it never expands. Unless, unless we ask for more money. Correct. So is the plan to house this ex group of people? I've always assumed they've already had housing, so why do we, or or is yeah. the plan to So this one is different. More? Yeah, this one is different. It's to actually build it. Okay. And provide services and provide rental supplement so the rent can be kept low. So the 14.5 million includes the 500 a month in rent? That's correct. That for the how many? Oh, I'm sorry, now? say that again. The, I'm asking the four, I'm for filling in the blanks, okay? Um, the 14.5 million, and I don't mean to trip you up, so please no. correct okay. me if I'm wrong. The 14.5 million is not only to build, okay, but also to provide the $500 per month for rental supplements for the households that occupy the units you're building? Uh, no. No. Uh, so the bill has three components. One with HSFDC to actually yeah. build it. 
out of $50 million. Okay. The second component is for each PHA to provide project-based rent supplement, and not the regular rent supplement. Re regular rent, su rent supplement goes to landlords anywhere they were. This one here will stay with that property that is being built. Mm -hmm. And then it has a component uh, for, for James Koshiba's folks for the 10 and a half, I believe, not 14 and a half, I believe it was 10 and a half million for the actual services for these folks. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So, yes, Senator. I, um, okay. I may ask you more questions. Of course. Can I keep asking questions? You can interrupt me because I'm kind of fogging it up. So, um, thank you. But I, I want to talk to either um, Scott Nakasone or or um, Scott. Where is she again? I want to know about this rental housing. I mean, rental housing involving fund blank mouth somebody who who can talk to me about that. HHFDC? Oh yeah, you're right. That should be you. Sorry, I got confused. Okay, so page seven. How much money do you folks need to fill in that blank? Rental housing revolving fund. Okay, it's my understanding that our initial ask was for $300 million for the uh, biennial. Um, and I believe that that amount was adjusted upwards to 400 million, so 200 million per year. 200 million per year? Yes. Okay. And how many units do you expect to, for that 400 million, I mean, for that 400 million? Um, I can't say specifically um, for the, the coming fiscal year. I would. I would have to check with our planning people and get back to you. Okay. And I, sorry, I'm just trying to think that. I think it was 50. <laughs> you know, I read the written testimony and I, I see like no figures, okay? <laughs> I understand. So I'm trying to figure out how we're going to pass a bill where there are no figures. So I'm trying to ask you guys questions. <clears throat> um, yeah, if you could get back to us. And right. I have a. So is it. Is it 50 million per year or or as chair of housing remembers it to be, or is it the 400 million for the biennial? Okay, we will get back to you. Thank you. And if it's 50 million, which is basically what HPHA also thought that you folks wanted, how many units would that be? Is it gonna be, um, at five hundred thousand, do we just divide? Do we just divide fifty million by five hundred thousand to figure out how many units you expect? Um, the, you know, the, the the logic of the math would be correct, but um, my recollection is that the per unit cost is something higher than five hundred thousand. So, but I can get back to you on that. I, okay. I can get back to you on, on the amount and and the number of units. Okay, so. Um, I'm looking at page six. You're, you're, you're still here, right? Yes. General revenues into the rental housing revolving fund. That that's the that's the four that's the four hundred million or possibly fifty million you're referring to. But the supportive the rental housing revolving fund in section four is also supposed to provide. That's the second blank that I thought you said, but I think I'm wrong supposed to provide for supportive housing projects and one full-time equivalent permanent housing finance specialist one position. So my question is whether or not it's a 400 million versus 50 million, which is a huge difference by the way, okay? It's a huge multiplier between 50 million to 400 million. What, what should we fill in on the second blank? Sure, they were both 50 million. Both 15 yeah, we million? Can, we can revert the numbers back to the original version. If that's, okay. If that's what you but, but his testimony is far more than that. But okay. Okay, so um, we'll, I'll accept chair of housing's memory of 15 million each. Okay. You, you folks will let us know if we need. We will get back to you uh, shortly. Okay, chair. so I'm sorry. I have a question, Chair, just okay. to add on to this clarification, because my understanding is that the 50 million or 60 million, I think at one point last year, HHFDC said it would cost 600 
million, uh, 600,000 per unit. So it was 60 million instead of 50 million for 100 units. But, but I think this is a sub, this is a, uh, this is a project that would be separate because it's, it's really supportive housing versus the 300 or 400 that, or 200 million. That's that consistent with my rent. memory, recollection, right. right. So it's separate. This is a separate that's creation correct. for supportive housing. That's correct. Not your, not, not our general affordable housing. So this is the same question. Right. That That's correct. Yeah. So, you know, um, this is going to go into WAM. Okay. Could we have written testimony from HHFDC as to what amount should be filled in on sections three and sections four? And um, section six refers to Koshiba, James Koshiba, will you be able to also provide written testimony as to what should be filled in for section six and section seven, which is the supportive housing information system. Okay, so thank you. And may I ask James Koshiba, can you come back up? I'm sorry. I'm just trying to fill out the blanks here. So why do you need a separate housing information system than the one that's already be, that, than the one you folks are already using? Is that Yeah, I, I don't know that we'll need to build a, a new system from scratch. This system may aggregate existing data and yeah. supplement it with new data. So one of the things that's a little bit different about um, this type of housing and the populations served is it's not limited to or prioritized necessarily for people um, who are designated as chronically homeless, which is a good thing to me. It's a broader definition. So some of the folks who may be housed by this permanent supportive housing may not be in existing homeless data systems, right. like the coordinate entry system. So that may be why you may need a separate right. system and you're gonna give us a full right. in writing by the time it goes to right. one. Mm -hmm. I guess my other question since you're, mm -hmm. and I see your predecessors behind you, mm -hmm. so he may um, say something. But did you, I know you folks do point in time counts, and I don't know if you're, do you know how much of the population of homeless or soon to be homeless um, are there now? Because I want to know whether or not the proposed amounts here is going to significantly reduce that amount, that, that figure, or whether or not HHFDC's amount of 400 million is more realistic. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, the, the, the newest, the latest point in time count data is not out yet. Yeah. But um, you know, on Let's a look at the last one. right on a on a total population of you know between six and seven thousand, and then we're talking about a pilot to create a hundred units of permanent supportive housing. It's not a hundred individuals; it's a hundred households. So you know, we could say you know, let's say so three it three should, people. It should, it in should terms of significance, I mean, we're talking several several hundred people, um, which is you know, I think it's a little subjective as to how you define significant. But I think the idea is to not only house a good number of people, and I think several hundred people is, is significant in my mind, but also to demonstrate the outcomes and the cost savings on other systems for getting folks housed with this type of system. And I mean, part of the case, I think the, the, the bill itself makes is that you'll realize cost savings in other areas um, if these folks remain unhoused. So 6,000. Um, expect to house about a couple of hundred. Mm -hmm. not, it's not that significant, but okay. Mm -hmm. But you're right, it's better than nothing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's it. Okay, great. Um, all right. Um, we can confer. Uh, yeah. why, don't we, why don't we take a recess and we'll come back to the situation. <clears throat> Okay, welcome back. We're uh, reconvening the committees on housing and uh, human services and health.
to do decision making on our agenda. And the first measure today is HB 224 HD2. Having conferred, the chair's recommendation will be to pass this measure with amendments. Um, we'll uh, include a report requirement to the legislature. We'll also reinsert the original appropriation amount of $500,000 and further defect the date. Um, members, any questions? Okay. Any chair, any questions? Uh, no okay. questions. Okay. Um, so for HB 224, HD2, Chair's recommendation for the Committee on Housing is to pass with amendments. Chair votes aye. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Kino. Aye. Senator Rhodes. Aye. Senator Awa. No. Chair, four eyes. Recommendations adopted. So for um, Health Com Health and Human Services Committee, same recommendation. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair for the vote. Okay, Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Chair Mario Waki. Aye. Chair Shimba Kuro. Aye. Chair Awa. No. Thank you very much. Recommendation is adopted. Okay, thank you. For our second measure on the agenda today, HB 1397 HD 1 relating to supportive housing. Chairs having conferred, the recommendation will be to pass this measure with amendments. First, we'll include the original HB 1397 amounts for appropriations of $50 million for the Rental Housing Revolving Fund construction, $10.5 million annually for the services, and $14 million for the project based rent supplement over 20 years to HPHA. Um, we'll further defect the date. Um, there are also technical non-substantive amendments for the purposes of clarity and consistency. Um, then we'll take the amendments from the governor's coordinator on homelessness to amend section 2D to account for the changes for changes in the cost for financing, operating, and maintaining housing, which will remove the $500 a month uh, cap on the project-based rent supplement payments. Um, it'll also uh, we'll also amend section 2E to clarify that payment amounts specified are per unit per month. Um, we'll retain the procurement exemption. We'll also exempt from chapter 103F. Uh, and then we'll also take their recommendation to amend section 2G to lengthen the effective dates related to implementation and reporting to December 1, 2024 for the interim report and December 1, 2025 for the final report. Um, We'll take the state procurement office's suggestion to include some reasons for the exemption from HRS Chapter 103D um, in the bill. And then finally, we will uh, take the State Council on Devel Developmental Disability suggestion to include employment help on page five, lines 13 to 14. Okay, so members, any questions or discussion? Chair Assembly Material? No. Okay. So again, for HB 1397 HD1, the chair's recommendation will be to pass this measure with amendments. Chair votes aye. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Kimo. Aye. Senator Rhodes. Aye. Senator Alwa. No. Four ayes. Recommendations adopted. For Health and Human Services, same recommendation. Chair votes aye. Okay, all members are present. Any reservations? Any no's? No. Okay, thank you very much. Recommendation is adopted. Okay, there being no further business, that agenda is uh, adjourned. Aloha and good afternoon. Welcome back to the Committee on Housing. We're now moving on to our 101 p.m. agenda. The first measure is HB 217 HD1 relating to home renovations, which updates the cost valuations of work on buildings for the work to qualify for an exemption from the requirement that plans and specifications for construction projects be prepared by a licensed engineer or architect. Our first testifier is Sunrun in support, followed by 350 Hawaii in support, followed by the Board of Professional Engineers, Architects, Surveyors, and Landscape Architects in opposition. Hi, here. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. My name is Sheena Choi, um, Executive Officer of the Board of Professional Engineers, Architects, Surveys, and Landscape Architects. Um, we would like to stand on our written testimony and are available for any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, we have the AIA Hawaii State Council with comments followed by two individuals in support, Andrew Crossland and Stuart Shoji. Anyone else wishing to testify on HB 217 HD1? 
Great. Uh, if not, we'll move on to HB 674 HD1 relating to the Hawaii Public Housing Authority. It repeals the percentage requirements for HPHA related to the admission of applicants with or without preferences into federal and state low income public housing. And we have one testifier, HPHA, in support. Thank you, Chair. Members of the committee, thank you for your support. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to testify on HB 674? Any questions, members? Okay, if not, we'll move on to HB 675 HD1 relating to HHFDC, which requires if sufficient funding is available, HHFDC to open at minimum two application periods each year for the receipt of applications for financing for the development of affordable housing in the state from LIHTC, Kula May, Rental Housing Revolving Fund, and Dwell Unit Revolving Fund. Um, we have uh, testimony from EAH Housing and Support and Will Caron in support. Is there anyone else wishing to testify on HB 675? Uh, good afternoon, Chair, uh, committee members. H uh, Delman Juan, uh, HHFDC. Uh, with respect to HB 675 HD 1, uh, HHFDC supports the intent. Um, we, we just like to point out two limitations, uh, one of which is, is somewhat covered by the wording of the bill, you know, where it says if sufficient funding is available. But I, I just like to point out that the main limitation is the private activity bond cap, which is set annually by the federal government um, and is typically exhausted after one funding round. Uh, the other limiting factor is staffing. Uh, it's been extremely difficult to recruit individuals with LIHTC or uh, PAB bond financing knowledge and experience, uh, which would be necessary for us to um, offer a second uh, round. Thank you. Um, any further testifiers on HB 675? Okay, if not, any discussion members or questions? Okay, we'll move on next to HB 677. Relating to the dwelling unit revolving fund, it requires HHFDC to establish a five-year dwelling unit revolving fund equity pilot program. It creates one full-time equivalent housing development specialist three position and appropriates funds. Um, we have no registered testifiers on HB 677. Is there anyone wishing to testify on this measure? Uh, Chair, uh, H Del Delman Juan, HHFDC, uh, with respect to HB 677 HD1, HHFDC would uh, like to express its strong support. Um, is there a reason why you weren't submitting testimony on, on bills like this? Um, yeah, as I as I mentioned earlier, uh, we, something unexpected came up uh, yesterday morning that just kind of really messed up our testimony right pre preparation process. So we weren't able to get them in for this particular hearing. I, I understand that, Mr. Vaughn, but no other agency has seems to have this problem. HPHA is always able to testify on time, for instance. Yeah, under, understood. And and like I said, you know, we apologize. Um, and we, uh, I mean, going forward, we we will get the written testimony in on time. I heard that from you before, Mr. Warren. And, and we did until today. <laughs> well, thank you. Okay. Um, is there anyone else wishing to testify on HB six seventy seven HD one? Um, any further testifiers for HB 677, if not any questions? Okay, uh, we'll move on to HB 679 relating to state funds, which amends the deposit of general funds for HHFDC's Rental Housing Revolving Fund in Act 236 to help the state meet its American Rescue Plan Act maintenance of effort obligations. Um, we have the Department of Budget and Finance with comments. That's it. Is there anyone else wishing to testify on HB 679? Chair, committee members, um, Delman Juan, HHFDC. Uh, HHFDC would like to express its strong support with uh, HH, uh, HP 679 House Rep 1. Thank you. Um, anyone else wishing to testify on HP 679? Okay, if not, any questions or discussion? Okay, if not, um, we'll move forward to HB 992 relating to the Affordable Home Ownership Revolving Fund, which clarifies section 6.4 of Act 248, Session Laws 2022, as it pertains to the appropriation for the Affordable Home Ownership Revolving Fund. Um, uh, sorry, I think I 
Am I out of order? I skipped HB 951 relating to housing, which deposits funds into the rental housing revolving fund to be used to provide grants or loans to mixed income rental projects or units qualifying individuals and families. And we have uh, first Housing Hawaii's future in support. Thank you, Chair, members of the committee, Sterling Higa on behalf of Housing Hawaii's future. Stand by our written testimony and just want to say that the rental housing revolving fund is a vital source of capital for the development of housing for the gap group earning between 60% and 100% of area median income. This gap group includes, as we mentioned in our testimony, teachers, firefighters, police officers, nurses, and other members of our hardworking middle class, and we hope that you will support them by supporting HB 951. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Thank you. Um, EAH Housing in support. Hawaii Realtors in support. NIOP Hawaii in support. Thank you. Um, High Ridge Costa in support and Ken Felling in support. Is there anyone else wishing to testify on HB 951? Uh, Delman Wan, HHFDC. Um, HHFDC would like to express its strong support for HB 951 House Draft 1 uh, and would like to offer an amendment that I will read uh, into the record. Uh, to preserve the consideration for tier two funding applications, we request an amendment on page one, section two, lines 14 to 17, provided further, any monies unused and unencumbered as of June 30, 2025, may be used for other rental housing projects pursuant to sections 201H-202E1A e and 201H-202E1B. Um, do you have a copy of that? I, I, I do. Uh -huh. You can receive this. Thank you. Thank you. Members, any questions on HB 951? Um, okay. um, we'll move on then to HB 992 relating to the Affordable Home Ownership Revolving Fund. Clarify Section 6.4 of Act 248 Session Laws of Hawaii 2022 as it pertains to the appropriation for the Affordable Home Ownership Revolving Fund. Um, we have DBED in support. Okay, anyone else wishing to testify on HB 992? Uh, Chair, uh, Delman Wan, HHFDC. HHFDC would like to express its strong support for HB 992 House Draft 1. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to testify on HB 992? If not, any questions or discussion members? Okay, we'll move on to um, HB 1246 HD 1 relating to housing. It authorizes HHFDC to issue bonds for infrastructure projects and to finance the development of regional state infrastructure projects. It authorizes the issuance of geo bonds with funds to be deposited into the dwelling unit revolving fund and appropriates funds into and out of the dwelling unit revolving fund. Um, we have Department of Budget Finance with comments. Hawaii Realtors in support. NIOP Hawaii in support. Thank you. Um, EAH Housing in support. Anyone else wishing to testify on HB 1246? Um, Chair Sterling Higa, please. Go ahead. Um, apologies, we weren't able to submit testimony on behalf of Housing Hawaii's Future. I just want to say that at Housing Hawaii's Future, we believe that housing is an essential public good, and therefore the state and counties are obligated to provide the public infrastructure, which is fundamental to good housing development. Uh, we support HB 1246 and hope that you will too, because it will equip HHFDC with the statutory and financial resources necessary to finance infrastructure development, which supports the housing that our community so urgently needs. Thanks for the opportunity to testify. Thank you. Next. Uh, Delman Wan, HHFDC. HHFDC would like to express its strong support on HB 1246, House Draft 1. Thank you. 
Good afternoon, Chair Mahalo, Nani Madera's Chief Housing Officer, Office of the Governor. Uh, this is one of the measures we did submit very late testimony on, and we are in support of this measure. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anyone else wishing to testify on HB 1246? Great, if not, members, any questions or discussion? Seeing none, um, we'll move to the last item on our agenda, which is HB 1395 HD1. Uh, relating to housing, it appropriates funds for the planning and design for new housing units at the Kapa'a Public Housing Project site in Kapa'a, Kauai. And we have HPHA in support. Thank you, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, we stand in support of this measure. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to testify on HB 1395? Um, okay, if not, any questions or discussion? Okay, I have one question, Director. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. I wanted to know how many housing units will this funding be used for and then how much money is needed? Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, currently, it's a federal property that has 36 units. We have confirmed with the county that there is enough uh, sewer and water to triple that. So this is for 104 units. Uh, total cost of $63.2 million to build. If the bill appropriates uh, some light tech into this, then the gap will be 20 million. Okay, so what is the appropriation amount that you're asking for? The, the total cost of the development is $63.2 million for 104 uh, units in that area. 63.2 million altogether? That's what was in the original bill? Uh, I don't believe the original bill had a, uh, had a uh, if we apply for, uh, if there is an appropriation of light tech for this project, then the ask is 20 million and the rest will be light tech. If, if it's paid all in one lump sum, then that's the cost for the, the 63. Um, and for 100 units? 104 units, uh, three times what it's there right now. That's what was confirmed by the county that there is enough uh, sewer and water to build three times the amount. Are you demolishing these existing units? That, that's correct. So these are gonna be over $600,000 a unit. It's about, fi yeah, $586,000 a unit. Uh, that's the current cost that we had from multiple other bidders. That's a lot of fun. I know. I know. The, j just, you know, the, the, we went out to, to get a bid to repair and to modernize by adding ADA units and make it compliant. Uh, just for that, without demolition, it came to about uh, $306,000 uh, to do that. Uh, but in order to demolish and increase the capacity from 36 unit to uh, 104 units, um, that was the, the development cost. The, unfortunately, the costs have been coming in lately at that price in the 586 to about $610,000 a unit. It's crazy. Cheers. Any other questions, comments? No, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. All right, that brings us to the end of the agenda. Um, we'll take a short recess and we'll come back for decision. Welcome back. The Committee on Housing is back for decision making on its 101 p.m. agenda. Um, so we'll begin. Um, the first bill is HB 217 HD 1. Um, we'll be deferring decision making on this measure to Thursday, March 14th, 1 p.m. in this room 225. The next bill is HB 674 HD 1 relating to HPHA. The chair will recommend um, that we pass this measure with amendments to further defect the date. Any questions or discussion members? 
If not, um, recommendation HB 674 is to pass with amendments. Chair votes aye. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Kimo. Aye. Senator Rhodes. Aye. Senator Wall. Aye. Five ayes. Recommendation is adopted. Thank you. Our next measure is HB 675 HD 1 relating to HHFDC. Um, the Chair's recommendation will be to pass this measure with amendments to further defect the date. Um, members, any questions? Okay, if not, um, HB 675 recommendation passed with amendments. Chair votes aye. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Kino. Aye. Senator Rhodes. Aye. Senator Alwa. Aye. Five ayes. Recommendations adopted. Thank you. Um, next is HB 677 relating to the Dwelling Unit Revolving Fund. Um, for this one, we'll also be deferring decision making until Thursday, March 16 at 1 p.m. in room 225. Um, next is HB 679 HD1 relating to state funds. The chair's recommendation will be to pass this measure with amendments to further defect the date. Any questions? Okay, so for HB 679 HD1, the chair's recommendation is to pass with amendments. Chair votes aye. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Kimo. Aye. Senator Rhodes. Aye. Senator Wah. Aye. Five ayes. Recommendations adopted. Thank you. Uh, next is HB 951 HD1 relating to housing. For this measure, again, we'll be deferring decision making to Thursday, March 16 at 1 p.m. in room 225. Okay, uh, next, HB 992 relating to the Affordable Home Ownership Revolving Fund. The chair's recommendation will be to pass this measure with amendments to further defect the date. Any questions? Again, HB 992, recommendation passed with amendments. Chair votes aye. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Kimo. Aye. Senator Rhodes. Aye. Senator Awa. Aye. Five ayes. Recommendations adopted. Thank you. For HB 1246, relating to housing, the Chair's recommendation will be to pass this measure with amendments. will require that the infrastructure um, authorized in this bill to be used for <laughs> housing. will also require uh, reporting to the legislature on housing units to be generated by infrastructure projects and will further defect the date. Any questions? Okay. Uh, if not, for HB 1246 HD 1, recommendation will be passed with amendments. Chair votes aye. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Kino. Aye. Senator Rhodes. Aye. Senator Awa. Aye. Five ayes. Recommendations adopted. Thank you. Um, and then for HB 1395 HD 1 relating to housing, the Chair's recommendation will be to pass this measure with amendments will um, include the $2 million appropriation for pre-development costs in the original bill, will further defect the date, and the committee report will also note that um, the total budget will be $63.2 million to build the 104 units. Okay, any discussion or questions, members? Okay. Uh, if not, for HB 1395, Chair's recommendation is to pass with amendments. Chair votes aye. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Kino. Aye. Senator Rhodes. Aye. Senator Awa. Aye. Five ayes. Recommendations adopted. Thank you. And there being no further business, this hearing is adjourned.